Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Forex Street webinar. Today is 1st December 2015, and we are going to talk about uh, gaps in Forex market and how to trade it. So we will first see, is there any gaps in Forex market? Uh, do they exist? And actually, are there any tradable gaps? So before I begin, as always, our standard risk disclaimer, explaining that a risk disclosure statement explaining that all financial risk can become from trading forex market and by accepting the risk disclaimer you're also proceeding further with me i am a moderator for this webinar and this is solely my opinion so these are not amuk's opinions at the web and the information in the presentation is solely made by myself Online educational materials are developed by Bernard Marquez Estonia for a global audience. And if you want to get a corresponding information on charting conditions and every other detail, you should visit albermarquezglobal.com, search your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity. And by accepting the disclaimer, you're also, as I said, proceeding further with me. And you know that if you choose Albert Markets, you you're effectively choosing the officially best MT4 broker. So let's cut it to the chase and talk about apps. So do they exist and how we can differentiate between tradable and non-tradable gaps? First of all, uh, we, will go, go, we will look through Friday and Sunday gaps. Then I will give you a classification of gaps. And then I will show you how to actually trade the gap. Okay. So first of all, uh, you probably wondered what causes those uh, empty spaces in price charts and what they, what they mean. Well, uh, gaps are real. The first thing is uh, to, to mention is that gaps are, are real. So gap is an area on a chart which there were no trades. It was just an empty area. Usually that will occur between the close of the market on one day and the next day is open, okay? In order to better explain that, I will say, I will say that retail traders, such as majority of us, and we are mostly retail traders, we can trade 24 hour, five times per week. So five days of 24 hour trading. So we are, we are effectively, effectively trading from Monday till Friday. Interbank market works every single day, 24-7. So it's then when we usually see gaps in Forex market. So gaps in Forex market are not so common for, let's say, gaps in stock market. But if you ever see a gap, usually that will be because uh, a Friday close was definitely different from Sunday late open. Better to say Sunday late open is different than Friday close. So there is a lot of things which can cause this, such as, let's say, some reports, major reports coming out uh, during uh, the weekend, but the uh, market was closed for that day, and interbank market only works. So retail market was closed. Uh, if, let's say, some price, some movements during the weekend caused the price on interbank market to significantly go higher or lower than Friday close. We might see a late Sunday, an early uh, Monday or late Sunday gap. So let's say that there were some reports uh, which uh, favored a jump in euro dollar and that could result in the price opening higher than Friday's day close. Okay, if the trading that day continues to trade above the point, that gap will remain open. So it won't close. So you need to differentiate between tradable gaps and non-tradable gaps. Okay. There is always a weakened risk if you carry over the trade during the weekend. Because may, uh, most of the time, profit-taking will happen during Friday. So we have a early London profit-taking, which happens usually around noon time, London noon time. And we can also experience some profit-taking during late Friday trading. Let's say around uh, 4 or 5 GMT. Because traders and investors just don't want to take any 
over weekend risks and they do not carry the trades over the weekend. So they close their trades. Remember, guys, profit taking is always initiated by either a close of buy or sell position. If you have a buy position and you know that your buy, your, your long trade is going to hit important resistance, and if majority of traders see that important resistance will be hit, they will, they will press close. Okay, they will close the trade. Uh, but what platform does is basically for every buy trade which you close, there is an automatic selling to the market. So basically, that is when price starts to go down. Okay, it's not necessarily uh, uh, an, uh, the end of, of uh, uptrend. It just means that uh, traders, majority of traders, are closing their uh, trades and price starts to go down. Okay, that usually happens during London noon and during late Friday. So pay attention to that. You will see usually that during Friday the price really tends to go down. Okay, uh, that is very important. Okay, one more thing to mention: uh, there can also be platform malfunction, and you can also see gaps when your platform freezes and then suddenly starts to work again. So if you experience a freeze of your MT4 and uh, in a couple of minutes or hours it starts to work again, you might see gaps. It's about platform malfunction and that didn't happen uh, during interbank market trading. So it, it, it was only about your PC or your server or maybe there was a liquidity problem with your uh, respectful brokers. For example, when Euro Swissy dropped the floor, I had a long position in uh, Euro Suisse, but I, I only lost some, something like 20 pips because Admiral Markets uses it has great liquidity, and I didn't I wasn't stopped out for 500 pip gap, so I my stop loss was respected. That is the very important thing when you choose a broker, which broker you want to trade with. You need to see the liquidity. You need to check the liquidity. If, if, uh, if a broker uses uh, a lot of different liquidity providers, uh, there should not be any problem with, with liquidity. But it's also very subjective. So before, of course, you start a trade, you should check it. Because you never know what might happen, guys. You never know what can happen during trading. There is no guarantee that there won't be any problems and also there is no guarantee that uh, you might not experience uh, platform and functional liquidity problems. It's just when you choose a proper broker, of course, you won't probably in, 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 in more than 95% of chance you won't experience the, the problem. But most of the time when everything is functioning correctly, we will see gaps uh, on late Sunday or early Monday. So that is when we see gaps. Okay. Now, this is the classification in, in trading terms, how we say for, for, uh, for the price when it moves. Okay. Price opens up above Friday's close. We say that the price is gapping up. If the price is opening below Friday close, we are, all, we are saying that the price is gapping down. Okay. Trading gap should take place at the, mar at the market open. So that is when we opt for a trade, at the market open, guys. Don't forget it. Okay? Usually, if the gap is less than 10 pips, we don't initiate any trade. Now, I will repeat this again. If you want to trade the gap, it should take place at the market open. Not later, because price may continue to gap up or to gap down. Okay? Having said that, we have four different gaps. Breakaway gap, runaway gap, or a continuation gap, com common gap, and exhaustion gap. So these are four types of gaps that do exist in Forex market. And no matter what others may say, I will say, and I will always repeat it. Gaps are real and they do exist in Forex market. I know that there were a lot of disputes between traders. Some are saying uh, gaps are not real. Some are saying gaps are real. I can say and I can back up with a lot with many claims. Not with, with I have a lot of material for gaps. Bra gaps do exist. Okay. 
and I will show you how to differentiate between these gaps and which gaps are tradable and which are not. <clears throat> Let's first start with a breakaway gap. So breakaway gap are, a, I can say they are a bit uh, exciting when they appear. Usually they will appear when the price action is breaking out of uh, its respectful trading range or a congestion area. Okay. Now, what does it mean, a congestion area? Usually, we can define a congestion area within a triangle close to the vortex of the triangle or within a well-defined range. Okay? A congestion area is a price range in which the market has traded for some period of time, usually for a couple of hours or for a couple of days, depending on the time frame. Okay? Likewise, the area near the bottom of congestion area is support, and this area to the upside is called resistance. To break out of these areas, it requires some uh, price movements uh, uh, which will follow through the range. And if, you, if we want to see a breakout of upper congestion area, we need to see uh, many more buyers than sellers. Or let's say many more sellers than buyers for a downside breakout. Usually volume spread analysis traders and traders who use thick volume in forex market, they will notice that volume pick up significantly, uh, and uh, uh, traders will continue to favor these positions. Because of that, the continuation above this uh, trading range might be very dangerous if you want to trade the gap. Because continuation is after the congestion is usually when the market will favor we are talking now about buy trades, will favor buy trades and there will be no gap close. We say that there is a breakaway gap. It's supported by high volume. It happens near strong support or resistance. It's not easy to trade. Current trend will resume without any significant retrace. You will not cover that easily, even with a hedge position. Retail traders mostly like to correct it, but I will say do not correct this gap. Gap can stay for a long time because it's a breakaway gap. The nature of a breakaway gap is to stay for a long time, guys. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that this type of gap is associated with a with uh, professional traders trying to close that. No, uh, breakaway gap is initiated with institutional traders and the only, the only ones who can fall into a trap are, real, are retail traders. And that happened with a uh, euro dollar, uh, the gap when 1.200 was broken. Guys, uh, do not fall into a trap of breakaway gap. That is a scholastic example of a breakaway gap. Okay, this is one of the examples of a breakaway gap. You see here we had a so-called megaphone pattern or broadening top, and that was also some kind of congestion. The price didn't go, it just made lows and highs without any significant trend. Then we had a breakdown of this uh, megaphone pattern, and you see, the breakaway was good for 80 pips, okay? Then what happened? For example, if you try to close the gap at the market open here, you would have been in a huge drawdown and probably you would have expected a margin call because this is four hour time frame and the market closed the gap a long time after it happened. Okay, it happened on 4th of uh, September, and the gap was closed seven, eight days earlier. So you needed a big account, for example, if you use it, a uh, big risk for this one, because I know that a lot of traders simply use bigger risk to, uh, because they think every single gap will be closed. No, guys, it, it, it doesn't happen like that. And then after the gap has closed, we can see cup and handle pattern and uh, the price proceeded with uptrend. But this breakaway gap was not closed. Okay, so breakaway gap will usually appear after some congestion 
or a range market, but also if any important resistance or support has been broken. This is the example of a breakaway gap in euro dollar. You can see still this gap still exists and it needs a strong rally to 1.2000. By the way, I don't think that uh, 1.2000 will happen anytime soon. So this, this was also a breakaway gap. And guys, you can see that a lot of traders were trapped into believing that this gap would be closed. When you see a strong congestion and, if, and when you see that important level of support and resistance has broken, has been broken, do not trade it. Because this gap usually is not defined by any significant pattern. Common gaps, I will talk about common gaps. We can see some, uh, some uh, patterns uh, with common gaps. But with breakaway gaps, you can only see congestion and or breakout of important support or resistance level. Usually historical level of support and resistance. Because of that, do not trade breakaway gap. Now, what is a runaway gap? Runaway gap are also called continuation gaps. And uh, those are best described as gaps that are caused by increased interest in the market. For example, when I say market, I refer to euro, dollar, pound, dollar, every single forex pair. It's called market. For runaway gaps, usually uh, we can say that those represent traders who did not get in uh, during, uh, who didn't get in during the initial move, and uh, they were waiting for retracement in price. So because they didn't see any retracement, they decided to jump in. Usually, runaway gap is determined and uh, by the strength of price to move forward. It, could, it can happen at important support resistance level, but not necessarily. It's usually seen along trend lines and usually occurs in the middle of the trend. So there is uh, a difference between a runaway and breakout gap. It's seen along the trend lines and it usually occurs in the middle of a trend. Runaway gaps can uh, also show in both uptrend and downtrend. Okay, so if you're holding a trade in the direction of the trend and find yourself in the runaway gap, tighten your stop because trend will likely be confirmed and there will be continuation in the trade. Okay, do not try to go counter the trend because it might be really, really dangerous, especially because this is a trend continuation. It's because of that we say continuation pattern. So it's trend continuation. Usually the gap will be filled when the trend resumes. Okay? So usually it's seen along some important trend lines. And as I said, it's seen in the middle of the trend. So let's say that this is an equidistant channel in Australian dollar, and we can see that it happened after some, uh, after a couple of swings has, have taken place. So this was swing one, then swing number two, and this, the third swing, had a, conti a runaway or continuation gap. We can easily put a trend line, and when we put it and we place a trend line, we can see a clear breakout and retest of the pattern. Usually, guys, uh, I, I wouldn't advise uh, trading this gap. The only way to trade a runaway gap is uh, you need to trade it after it happens. So when you see that there was a gap, and this was the close of the gap at this point, Try to initiate a short trade because the gap was closed and we call it continuation. So the trend will likely resume. So uh, in contrary to, uh, uh, to uh, break away gaps, this gap can be traded, but not in the sense of immediately opening a trade after you spot a gap. You need to, to wait for the gap to be filled Okay, and then when the gap is filled, you wait for the short signal. 
short signal will usually uh, come either as a hidden divergence, which is a cue that the trend will continue, or it can be a bearish candlestick, as in this example. So don't forget that these gaps can exist in both uh, bullish and bearish markets. Same example with uh, a runaway gap. We have uh, identified a downtrend here. We can see a nice downtrend. And usually at this example here, we can see that there was a breakout and retest so of this trend line here. Okay, or it can be a simple inner trend line as this one. And then when you see that this is a shooting star, right? Or so-called pin bar. So that is your cue that after this candle, the, the trend will continue and the price will probably go uh, or tank even more to the downside. So that is why I say runaway gaps can be traded, but only after the price has closed the gap. Not before that, because if you try to trade it, as I said, when the, the gap uh, on, on the leaving gap, you might lose a trade because a runaway gap can be transformed into a breakaway gap. The only difference is a breakaway gap is not immediately closed, but the runaway gap is usually closed after two or three candles. Okay, and I'm, I'm specifically referring to one hour or four hour time frame not 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or let alone lower time frames. Okay? So that is how you define a runaway or continuation gap. Now, a common gap is something which we can trade and which we usually trade during uh, uh, the initial, the initial uh, uh, gap open, and that is usually at the uh, early Monday or late Sunday market open. It usually appears inside a price chart pattern and they are easily covered. Okay, so that is we call common gap as a trading gap or a rear gap. The common gap is usually it will happen at the usually will happen at the market open Sunday open and uh, Usually, it's, usually uh, it's an eventful. So there was no big, big event which preceded the gap. These gaps are common, okay? And, it, and usually they get filled very quickly. Uh, when, when I say getting filled, I mean definitely to, uh, that the gap will be closed. So getting filled is known as closing the gap, okay? But... Before we delve into how to trade the gap, you need to know that this is the, sec the most secure way to trade the gap, and that way is only done by trading common gap. So we cannot trade continuation gaps the same way as we trade common gap. Okay? Uh, usually that price chart pattern will uh, show head and shoulders, rectangle, triangle, or any of well-known chart patterns. As the name implies, they are very common. Many times, common gaps will get filled, and we usually will see low tick volume. Okay? Being aware of these gaps is good, but usually do not expect some big, big, big price movement because usually those, the gap will be filled and uh, there will no be some significant movement uh, during uh, the remainder of a session. So if usually if it happens on early Asia session or Wellington session when, when market opens up, uh, you will see the gap close and then there will be a range. The trend will continue afterwards. So if you want to trade the common gap, you can try to trade it. And when, when the gap is very close, on one or two pips uh, close to the, the exact gap, you close your trade. So if the market, let's say, gaps below the triangle here, you can try to go long and close the gap, not at the exact price, but rather one or two pips below 
the gap because sometimes the market will not go exactly to the pip. So if you see this is a bullish wedge, it's called a bullish wedge, and this is indeed a bullish wedge gap. As I said, they will appear inside a price chart pattern, and usually, okay, this was this is the gap. They will be easily covered. When you see that the gap has started, that the price has started to move down, it's usually the earliest cue that the gap will be closed. So let's say that this is a gap, which indeed it is, and this is the market open. Next candle is bullish, right? So these two candles are telling us that the price has started to go down and the gap will be covered, which happened at this point. Okay, so usually when you see a common gap, it, it will appear in, a, in some chart pattern and you can try to close the gap. This is also an example of rectangle gap. Here you can see a rectangle gap and you see that here we see a gap. Now, guys, pay attention. This is bullish hammer or so-called pin bar. Usually when price gives you this pin bar, it means that the next candle will be bullish. So this is your cue that after this candle, you might try to close the gap. And you can see it here. The gap has been closed. Okay. Okay, this is so-called running triangle. Why we call this running triangle? Because there is no vortex. When you see this kind of triangle, we said this is a running triangle. And it has a gap, and it also has a flat top. If you see in this triangle, this would be a complete flat top ascending triangle with a vortex. Vortex is the final price point where we expect the price to break out. Okay, this is the vortex of the triangle. Now, because we have identified this as a flat top running triangle, we can see that the price has broken down and we might see that, uh, uh, that the gap will be closed. This is our signal to close the gap. Not immediately after we spotted a gap, because uh, you see there was a retracement. Rather wait for a price to start to move up. Zoom into lower time frame and let's say 15 minute time frame if you spot uh, if you spot it on four hour time frame and try to see when price tr goes up with a bullish candlestick. That is the time when you will usually see that the price will close the gap. Okay, so I will also show you with a live, on a live chart, but uh, at this point, it's important for you to know that you can trade common gaps, but only after you see a signal, not immediately when you see a gap, okay, I will try to close it. Not. You don't do it like that. You need to see a signal, a cue that the market will indeed close the gap. And the final gap is so-called exhaustion gap. Exhaustion gap uh, usually happen near the top. So uh, they will probably appear near the top, although I, I saw that some traders uh, uh, traded it uh, near the end of the downtrend. But because it's exhaustion gap, the nature uh, for the, the, the structure of, exha of exhaustion gap is derived for sto for, from stock market. And usually in stock market, you see and you know that the, the, it will appear near the top. So when we trade Forex market, I can say it might appear near the bottom, but it's more reliable if it appears near the top. And usually that top should be a historical resistance. That means that current uptrend will usually lose steam, and we know that retracement should happen soon. Okay? They are identified by high tick volume and larger price difference between previous close and new opening of the price. They can easily be mistaken for runaway gaps if you do not spot exceptionally high tick volume okay, and historically important uh, resistance. That is why when I see the gap, use a tool from Admiral Markets uh, Supreme Edition 
tick trader so I can see the actual ticks. And then is the time when I know if this is indeed a gap which can be traded or not. So that is why I say, guys, uh, we really have, uh, I really use it heavily. It's called uh, Under Market Supreme Edition. It has correlation matrix. It has tick volume. So actually, you can see whether the, there is a tick volume or uh, there is a really uh, low volume or there is any negative or positive correlation between majors and minors. So you always should pay attention to that, especially if you want to trade uh, when, when gaps appear. So exhaustion gap uh, can give you good risk to reward, but uh, I can say that they will quickly get filled. Okay, they will quickly get filled. The prices will gap up with huge volume. Then if we see a great profit taking, then we see a close of the gap. Okay, so exhaustion gaps, as I said, usually will happen here. In, you can see this was an old chart, dollar yen, important, important high. And you see there was, in, there was a huge, huge bounce from this trend line, which is also an important high. And that is the time when you see that the important highs has been made, okay, you should try to watch tick volume. Usually, when you see that bears are really getting into bull strength, so bears are uh, winning over the bulls, that is the time when you try to close the gap. This is how I do it. This is important high. Let's say I spotted this on weekly time frame. So this is when high was touched. And this is when retracement initiated i don't know if because this is weekly time frame i don't know if this candle will really close bearish or bullish so that is why i always zoom in to lower time frame i draw a line here because this is an interim support when this support is broken i initiate a trade okay so this is when when where i will i would initiate a trade and I would like to see this gap fill. And you can see the gap usually gets filled quickly. Look at this. This candle here is showing us that this gap has been quickly filled. And majority of traders have closed their positions. Remember what I said at the beginning of the webinar. Every close of sell is automatic buy into the market. So all sellers here close their old orders, majority of sellers, and you see the price started to move up. So that is how you can read the market easily. It's not hard. You can find it by yourself by watching through different uh, time frames, and you will see that there are a lot of gaps which can in easily be identified and be traded. So once more for uh, exhaustion gap, when you see that the price is moving near important high, try to roll your charts to the left. You will usually see that there is important historical resistance. Price touches the resistance, but you see there is still a gap here. Okay, this is not so precise. There is still a gap here. And then next candle starts to retrace. You zoom into lower time frames. Draw a line which resembles the support of previous bullish candle and wait for this level to break. When it breaks, you place your, your entry here, put your stop loss above this important high and wait for the gap to close. When, when you see that the gap has indeed been closed, you, you close your, your uh, trade and usually you will see the uh, the, uh, the movement to the upside. As I said, that is because majority of traders close their sell position, positions, which was a, an automatic buy into the market. Okay, now guys, how to trade gaps? Define the gap, the most important thing. First step is to define the gap. 
Remember, you don't trade breakaway gap, never. You can try to trade the runaway gap. I already explained this. And the best to trade is in either a common gap or exhaustion gap. You won't see exhaustion gap very often because it will only appear in very, very strong bullish markets. But a common gap, you will usually see a lot more often than others. Stay away from runaway gaps if you don't know to differentiate between breakaway and runaway gap. And never try to trade breakaway gap. For common gaps, stop goes above candle high. Okay? If you want to trade, trades to the short side. If you want to trade trades to the long side, stops go below can low. For exhaustion gaps, always because it's bullish market exclusively, stops go above long-term highs. Don't forget it. Enter at the candle close, common gap, which was initiated by either buyers or sellers, or wait for reversal candle pattern, exhaustion gap, or use fade out strategy. I'm not sure that I have explained a fade out strategy, but I will be surely explaining that next month. So you can also use fade out strategy to trade the gaps. I will uh, be explaining this strategy soon. This is very good strategy where you protect yourself from false breakouts. Okay. Let's use this example. Okay. So define previous swings for stops. So we we have identified this gap as a common gap, okay? So we can trade it. Define previous swing for stops, okay? Enter, so this is indeed when market gapped up, okay? So we need to wait for retracement to finish. And this is when we got the confirmation that market will go down, bearish candle. Although it's not good, it's a doji. It's much better if it, if it, if we show it, if it shows it as either pin bar or some uh, more important bearish candle. Let's say I prefer really pin bars, okay, like this. But let's say this was our signal to go short. So you enter short, you place your stops just above this region because this was a previous swing and you want to close the gap. You exit your trade in this zone here. Rectangle gap, so immediately when you see this pattern, you open a trade because this is very bullish. There was no bearish movement, guys, here. See, there was no bearish movement. There was only a bullish candle here, pin bar. So you enter immediately after the close of the candle, put your stop loss below the candle and try to close the gap. So it's very important that you know that if you want to trade gaps, you need to start trading it only when market is giving you the cue that it started to close the gap. So when you see that after this bull, you don't open your trade here because it's bullish. You see the market is still bullish. What if this transforms into a breakaway gap and it goes high, high away? We assume it won't because it's, it's a common gap. We have a bullish wedge. You see, there is no big volume in this candle. So we assume this is indeed an, a, a, a gap which was uneventful. There was no event prior to it. And this is the cue that the market has started to retrace, to close the gap. First short candle, next short, can, short candle. There was some uh, hesitant to close the gap, and after this breakout, you see the gap was closed by a huge, huge, huge number of selling volume. Okay? Same here. There was no sellers below this candle, so there were, there were only buyers here. So immediately when this candle closed, you enter the market. I already explained about exhaustion gap. So this was the cue when you start to trade Exhaustion gap to the downside. So after the gap shows up, wait for candlestick confirmation. Hammer rejection, candlestick, engulfing patterns, those are strong, guys. 
piercing line is good for bullish price action. The opposite of piercing line is dark cloud for bearish price action. When you see this happening, you can safely enter a trade because you will have like 65 to 70 percent of success that your gap will be closed. Okay. W one more example. You see this, the price went down, bang. This was initiated here, but this gap didn't have any pattern. This is not a pattern. This is untradeable. A runaway gap, guys. Remember, guys, runaway gap can show either with a no pattern or let's say like, like broadening, broadening top. This is a form of broadening top because this we didn't have any high here. But it's a form of broadening top. Beware of megaphone patterns. We never trade any gaps which happened after the megaphone. No significant pattern here. So this is indeed a runaway gap. It was close here, but you see, only after there were some, very, it was a good chance that the market will proceed to go down without closing a gap. Now we can also uh, try to see it on the live charts. I can prepare two examples for you guys. Okay, let me show you the screen. Okay, here, uh, this is the screen. So, usually you will see gaps, as I say, uh, at market close and then the open. You see that was the market close and the market open. There was a gap here. You can easily see this is left shoulder head. And this is right shoulder here. So, of course, you will try to close the gap at this point because you can see the gap was closed here. It was not a big one. It was not a big gap. It only had six pips, but assume that it was a bigger gap. And, of course, when you see head and shoulders pattern, you can easily try to close the gap. Here we can see a bigger gap, and this gap was good for some... Let's say it was not a big, 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 like 11 pips, not a big one. Uh, but the thing is, it's still the par of a chart pattern. But you see, even though if you open your trade here, this gap would be closed because it had M pattern. This is M, you see, M, bearish M. So after a bearish M, you see this gap should have been closed by all means here. Now, guys, obviously, if this was four hour time frame, this gap would have been like some 30, 40 pip. So my advice for you is if you want to try to close the gap, try to do it on higher time frames, higher time frame, guys, because I never recommend trading gaps which are less than 10 pips. Never, because your risk to reward is not good enough to justify the trade. Boyke is saying your sound is best ever. Thank you, Boyke. Thank you. So, guys, this is everything we had for this webinar. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, I hope that I have cleared uh, uh, some uh, things about gaps, because you will probably hear a lot of times that, that Forex market does not have any gaps which is simply not true, i shown you, and I can always find a gap easily identified. So if, you, if, you, if you're not experienced, do not hesitate to contact me. Send me a gap, and I will define it for you. My email is tarantulafix at, uh, at gmail.com. So if you see a gap on higher time frame, send it over. I will tell you if the gap is indeed tradable or not, or if it's a... Uh, if it's a runaway or breakaway or a common gap. But I hope this will help you to be a better trader. I don't see any questions, so I might assume, uh, I might assume that the webinar is over. So I will be here with you soon, guys. As always, if you have any further questions, do not hesitate to contact me on my email. And Boyk is asking now what happens to stop if price gaps uh, you always need to have a stop loss if you're referring to stop loss. I, I have uh, shown you here. So if you traded this trade here at this price, so you enter a short trade here, put your stop loss at previous swing like this. 
and wait for the gap to close. If in the middle of the gap, let's find this example, the middle of the gap here. Okay, this is runaway gap. Indeed, okay, easily. I will show you this example. So, when did, uh, how do we trade uh, uh, runaway gap? After the gap has been closed. So, this is when gap has been closed. Obviously, you would need to put your stop loss above this high. Okay? And, and as you can see, you can, because this is four hour time frame, usually 10 pips above this line in, in, in plus, plus the spread. So, your stop would probably go somewhere around this region. And you can see if you initiated your trade here, you would you would have been in a huge profit. So if you want to trade runaway gap, ah, if stop was before gap, well, uh, uh, Boyki, the answer to your question is gaps are are traded. Yes, I understand. Over the weekend, gaps are, are traded independently. So if you already had uh, an order. It does not have it doesn't have anything to do with gap because gap is traded independently from your previous trades. So let's say that you had a, a short entry here, okay here, and you had a stop loss here. It doesn't matter because this gap is traded independently. Every gap is traded independently. So it usually serves as second entry. So you definitely should uh, remain loyal to your system and respect this stop loss. But just for gap, for the sake of gap trading, you trade it independently over other positions. Yes, Boyki, normal trade. If you already had a normal trade, if you already had a normal trade, it is your normal trade. It is one of your trades. Second trade is gap trading. So you initiate trade independently. It doesn't have anything to do with your normal, normal trade. So you put your stop loss to your gap trade as you would normally do, with, as I explained. But this first trade of yours should probably remain open. It depends. If you see that the market will proceed in your previous trade direction, then... Leave it open. If you see that the market will go other way, close your trade. But you trade gaps independently. They are always an independent entities. Remember that. Okay, guys, we are already over the time. Thank you for listening. I will be here with you soon. As always, guys, trade safe. I wish you all the best in upcoming week. And do not forget, Thursday will be huge volatility day. Do not trade on Thursday. Cheers.